Let me find my stuff. I can't like forget. I said, no, I forget. I just can't find it. There we go. So don't forget our seniors will be going to the grace of God. <clears throat> the last, what day? 21st. 22nd. The last Wednesday. <laughs> the last Wednesday of this month. Grace of God. And be serving a, 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 a break. Be serving a meal <laughs> and food. And our part is bringing cakes. Uh, and they got to go up there and cut them up and distribute. So they want you to have your cakes dropped off by 3 o'clock. Or if you can't make the cake, you do like me to go to England and buy one. <laughs> that way you sell them all day long. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, this coming week, of course, Miss Eleanor has a birthday on Valentine's Day. Hope and praying she can be home and enjoy her birthday, not be in the hospital by then. And my dad has one Thursday. And senior meeting will be the 20th next Monday mm -hmm. at uh, 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. and bringing drinks. What are they supposed to bring? Bring, drinks. bring drinks. And we're going to play bingo. We're going to play some bingo. And then Miss Annette has a birthday the 23rd. And that's for our food pantry items. So this is all that we need for our food giveaway, which will take more than this. What we need, ravioli, we need 169 cans of ravioli, 61 jars of peanut butter, 148 cans of pork and beans, and 98 cans of jelly. So 98 jelly, 148 pork and beans, 61 peanut butter, 169 ravioli. And it will be good as far as that goes. So we pray about that. What about so, 24 ravioli I got there? <laughs> I just keep forgetting to bring it. All right. Now they don't count if it ain't here. <laughs> It'll be here. All right, 24. Because Brian, Brian was doing like sharing yesterday. Yes. Uh -oh. Yes. 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 What we need the most of? Um, the loofahs or the washcloths. Yep. Um, everything. Okay. Soap, yeah. toothpaste, yeah. shampoo. Yep. Shampoo, soap, yeah. soap. Okay, that's fine. Quite a few deals and stuff. Okay. Quite a few, but. Well, the Barley's very good at distributing. So, delegating. So delegating. We'll, all right, yeah, we'll work on getting that together. So any, anything for the hygiene bags, go to motels, guys and gals that we give out. Uh, it's all little things we take for granted. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yep. so the, the, like toothbrush, toothpaste, go to shampoo, loofahs, washcloths, anything like that uh, will help. And our shoe boxes, of course, up here beside Andrews, way on top of five of them. Uh, <coughs> so if you get them, it probably won't close. And it's not a bed rest there, buddy. But uh, but anyway, pray for them. We start filling those up and just excited. And you know, if we can do stuff near and far, you know, it's good to, to do that. It's good to do this. And I thank God that personally that I love how everybody just wants to give yep. and just wants to help. It's a, yep. it's a beautiful thing. Amen. Amen. And, and God is always going to bless yep. when you try to help another, <laughs> always going to. And I thank you for that. Appreciate everybody to come out yesterday for our Valentine's banquet. We had quite quite a crowd. It was awesome and all kind of beautiful pictures and <laughs> fancy poses. And I told them what happens in the basement stays. <laughs> Gotta get away from the basement. But anyway. Amen. Amen. And of course it didn't. It went on Facebook. But anyway, you know. That's how you, that's how you have fun. But appreciate all of all the men come and help out serving our, our ladies for Valentine's yes. Banquet. Right. And We're going to have some more pictures posted today. Okay. Of ones that didn't get their picture taken. All right. And <laughs> appreciate Green Cafe. They're the ones that, that catered and everything. Appreciate that. Uh, and appreciate Nathan and Johnny helping go over there and get everything. Thank So everything went good pick it up. It's kind of funny because everything... The, the meat was in a big old container and it was filled up to the top with juice. And I was like, I don't want to carry that. I know what's going to happen there. The baked potatoes and water filled up. So I let Nathan take one and Johnny take one and both of them experienced 
feelings. <laughs> can, I get, can I get a witness? And, uh, and, uh, I come out of it unscathed. And uh, just <laughs> thankful for that. But appreciate everybody helped out. It's an absolute, absolute honor and blessing to, to come together and, and fellowship together. Yeah, uh, appreciate that. Uh, Is that a birthday? Yeah, here's our birthday today. 58. Yeah. Yeah. Four year old. Baby girl, you stand up. Grown men and women back there gonna come sing for us. So I didn't mean to call them babies. Ray, he's like, I ain't a baby. <laughs> Casey, you gonna come sing, buddy? Right like three good chili for all y'all done yesterday. Yes. Uh, yeah. All the y'all do for the church. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Come on, Casey, come sing. I ain't sing right, buddy. Well, since we're all appreciating everybody, I want to uh, appreciate Johnny this morning. You all all sing a little bit. Uh, he sacrificed himself and posed with several of the older ladies. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, you got a phone? Where? Oh. Anybody else got one? That's the one lyric in that song that gets above everything. It says, I love you, yes. and I know you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Just say, I know you, and yeah. I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? You know, thank God for joining me and getting ready. Thank God for working for a truck when you get Yep. God and grab my food and try to get you ready. Yes, he did. Everybody else. God laid it on my heart for all of us to pray for Eleanor. Yeah. I know my sister, I can't come here. No. Yeah, came in for it. God laid it on my heart to do that. We can do it. No, I don't remember. Sorry. So remind me. Anybody else want to brag on the Lord? I want to brag on the Lord for He's making me strong. He's keeping me going. And yeah. Through all the trials and tribulations I've been going through in the Lakers. And He knows in my heart what I need. And I know He's just going to give me what I need. Yeah. Not what I want, but right. what I need. I just thank him with all my heart for just keeping me strong because I have been struggling. And I know he's there with me too. Yeah. Yep. Anybody else? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, he is. Yes. Yep. Comfort. He is our comfort. Yep. Yes, he is. Yep. In times, you know, if we didn't have him, I That's don't know right. what we'd do. That's right. And I don't know how people face things in life, right. not knowing Jesus. Right. But he's there, his spirit's with us always. Yep. And there's a good song, he abides in us. Yeah. Yep. He does abide. Yeah. And I thank you for that. Yep. Thank you for all this church. Amen. For yes. all these beautiful people. Yes. And our new people. Yes. And everybody. Yes. Yes. Hey, they're beautiful too, aren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> they're they are. beautiful. that we're like that, you know, he created us, so yes. he knows, and I feel like maybe 
Maybe sometimes he allows that so that he allows us to turn to him so that he can show us. Yeah. You know, who he is. Yeah. yeah. And I thank you for that, Jesus. Amen. Mm-hmm. Everybody else. Yeah. 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 I'm also thankful that our salvation is not based on our feelings. That's all I'm about to say. That's right. If that was the case, a lot of days I would not be saved. Because I don't feel it. And it's not based on what we feel, but what he said he would do for us. All we have to do is ask. Anybody else? The only thing you and I had to do was salvation, and we was there, we took place. Yeah. We couldn't do nothing else about it. Time, brother Nathan. Hey, it, well, it, it, well, it, it was funny for clapping. It was funny. I, I got up there and I saw it was a little funny call put up there about when your heart breaks and get ready to start crying. I thought, man, she must know that I can get up there and start crying like I do every week. <laughs> 
Marvelous job. Y'all need to take lessons from Shelly. Yes. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. Y'all doing all right this morning? Sure. Praise God. That's wonderful. I want to, first off, tell each and every one of you, thank you for your obedience. Yeah. For standing up and or sitting there with just speaking and giving God praise this morning and because I'm going to be honest with you, I was between two different messages, and I didn't know which way God wanted me to go, and I was really struggling with it. And I was like, God, and the whole time while we were singing and stuff, and, and the songs, and the ladies was up there singing, I was trying to figure out, I was like, God, I don't know, I don't know what you want me to preach this morning. I've got these two messages that you give to me, and I'm, I'm in between, I'm torn, and I don't know which direction to go, and I don't ever want to preach something that God's not going to be in. Amen. So I'm, I'm thinking in my mind, God, where do I need to go? What do I need to do? And because of each and every one of y'all being obedient this morning, God made it clear to me. This morning, I'm going to ask that you turn to the book of John. John chapter 10. When y'all find your place, I'm going to ask that you stand out of reverence for the reading of God's word. John chapter 10, we're going to read, we're going to start at verse 25. John chapter 10, verse 25. John chapter 10, verse 25, the word of God says, Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Yep. But ye believe not, because ye are not right. of my sheep, as I said unto you. Right. Verse 27. Amen. My sheep hear my voice, yep. and I know them, and they follow me. Yep. And I give unto them eternal life, yep. and they shall never perish, neither yep. shall any man pluck them out of yep. my hand. Yep. Do you hear that? Yeah. Nobody can pluck you out of the hand of God. Yeah. If you have been saved and truly born again, Amen. you are saved and born again yeah. forever. You yeah. cannot lose your salvation if you Amen. truly have it. Amen. My Father, which gave them me, yeah. is greater than all. Right. And no man is able right. to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Right. I and my Father yeah. are one. Amen. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you, God, for your many blessings, yeah. God, that you give to us, Lord. Yeah. Oh, God, we're not worthy of them, God. We don't yeah. deserve them. We yeah. haven't earned them, Lord. Yeah. But, God, you love us enough to yeah. give them to us anyway, Lord. Yeah. I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I ask now, God, for this next few minutes, God, Lord, that you loose my tongue, God. Give me liberty. Give me freedom in this place this morning, God. Lord, I ask you, Father, that the Holy Spirit fall down amongst us, God, and move freely among all your people, God. Move through the aisles and the you search each and every heart, God, and lay conviction where it needs to be laid, Lord. Revive, restore, God. I ask you this morning, God, that you just move in a mighty way, God. Lord, I ask that you bind up all the devils and demons of hell, God, and we cast them out of here in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We only want you to move freely amongst us this morning, oh God. And Lord, I pray, God, that if there's someone in here this morning, God, that does not know you, Lord, as their personal Lord and Savior, oh God, Lord, the Word of God, Lord, you tell us, God, that now is the day of salvation, God. Right now, at this moment, Lord, I pray, oh God, you start dealing with their heart, Lord. I pray, God, for the one that's backslid, God, the one that's got back out in the world, Lord, draw them down, God. Lord, help them, oh God, this morning, Lord. Help me, God, this morning, Lord. Yes. Preach me, God, Lord. I'm your mouthpiece, God. Use me. Yes. It's your honor, your praise, and your glory to have. It's nothing of mine. I don't deserve it. Lord, I love you. Yes. I thank you and I praise yes. you. For it's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor you love them. Love
Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> sure I, miss nobody. I, I probably didn't miss something. If I missed you, I'm sorry. I love you. Amen. I apologize. <laughs> this morning, I'm going to bring you a message. God gave me this message last year, and I preached it one time, and at the time, I'd never really preached a message this way, and <laughs> You'll understand as time goes on, but <coughs> me and my wife, we was on vacation. We had went and flew on a plane to a place called Punta Cana, which is in the Dominican Republic. And during this week, it was our anniversary that we went down there for. It was 10 years we'd been married. It was horrible. <laughs> the food was bad. The trip was bad. The experience was bad. The best part was the plane ride back home and landing in Charlotte. <laughs> Now, with, with all that being said, God gave me a message while I was there. And it was, do not take for granted the things that we have here in America. Amen. When I actually got back, I was preaching down at Caroline Baptist Church for a little bit. Most of y'all know me know that, but... I, I was preaching down there, and I, I got back in there that morning, and it's that Sunday morning, and we got back Saturday. I'd gotten there Sunday morning, and um, it was uh, Veterans Day. It happened that Friday. So we, I, I asked if there any veterans. I honored them and stuff, and we had one that stood up. We give a round of applause, thank them for his service. And, buddy, I let them have it because I told them they didn't like America to pack their bags and get out, and that's the way I still stand today. If you ain't happy in the United States, then get out. You don't have to live here. It's not Nobody's forcing you to live here in America. But I was thankful for the food, and I was so thankful for everything that we had here in America that we take for granted. 
But God gave me a message during this time. And I'm going to ask you. You can set your Bibles down for me because you're not going to need them for just a little bit. I, I, God gave me this message and I had to write a lot of this down because it was just, I, I couldn't remember all this. <laughs> but I'm going to bring you a message this morning with God's help. And it's God's not done with you. Yeah. Now, I was going to preach you a message that said, you are responsible. <laughs> now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, that was going to be a pretty tough one, but hey, we, God told me that this is the one that needs to be happened, yeah. needs to be brought. As I was sitting in this room, this wasn't a dream. This was, honestly, I was sitting there at, at, at the place, the resort we was at, and all this was coming to my mind. It was like a vision I was having. But I was sitting in a room, and I had looked all around this room, and there was a table that was set right in front of me. And there was a chair right across from me. I felt like I was in an interrogation room. And as I sat there, I noticed that there was two doors. I was sitting right here. There's a table. There's a chair in front of me. Over to my right is a door. And over to a left, it to my left is a door. And I'm sitting there thinking and I'm scratching my head and I'm wondering, why am I here? What have I done? What is getting ready to happen to me? What have I committed? Have I done a crime? What is going on in my life right now? And as I continue sitting there, a man, he came walking through the door on the right hand side where I was sitting. A man came walking in. And he came through that door and he sat down in front of me and he said, do you know who I am? To which I responded, no. I've never seen this gentleman before in my life. I don't know who you are. This man said, I was perfect and I was upright. I feared God. I eschewed evil. I'm the man that lost everything. I lost my ox, my sheep, my camels, my servants, my children, my health. I was stricken with balls and I wasn't sure why. I had lost all of my livelihood. I lost all my family except for my wife and my friends. All of them blamed me for everything. If you're a study of your Bible, you already know who I'm talking about. But if not, we're going to get to that in just a moment. And this man looked at me and he said, what great friends I have. I asked God to die, and I was told to just go and die by my wife. I questioned God asking what I had done to deserve this. And God obliged me with an answer. Did you create the heavens and the earth? Do you have the power over Leviathan? Are you the one that's over the universe? And at this point, I responded, or I repented for what I had done. And I turned from my questioning of God. I prayed for my family and my friends as the Lord has said, and the Lord gave me twice as much as before. Gave me seven more sons and three more daughters and the most beautiful in the land of all. I was also given a long life and died full of days. He said, my name is Job. God's not done with you. I continued sitting there, and this man, he got up, and he walked, he walked out the other door. He came in on the right, and he walked back out on the left, and I sat there in silence. And I wondered still what was going on and why was this happening. I didn't know who this man was. I had never seen him before in my life, but I'd read about him. But I didn't, I, at that time, I didn't comprehend. None of this was coming to me. I was like, I don't know what's happening. I don't understand this guy. And as I was lost in my thoughts, the door on the right-hand side, it opened up again. And another man, he walked through, and he sat down across from me. And this man was a good-looking, handsome fella, and he asked me the same question. He said, do you know who I am? Once again, I sat there wondering, where am I? And who is this guy? And I was scratching my head and finally I looked at the guy and I said, no sir, I, I don't know who you are, I'm sorry. The man looked at me and he said, 
I was just a shepherd boy when I was anointed king over Israel. Saul was king before me, and I slayed a giant named Goliath. I was a man after God's own heart. Saul sought to kill me, but never prevailed. I had the opportunity twice to kill him, but I chose not to kill the anointed one. Right. I'm the one that committed adultery. I want to pause right there for just a moment and talk about, we're talking about David. Most of y'all probably gathered that. If you didn't, well, we're going to talk about it anyway. A lot of people, and I didn't realize this until I really started reading about this. You know, and this is going to get pretty deep in just a second. Some of y'all might be like, oh my gosh, can't believe he said that. But David actually committed rape. Yeah. Yeah. You see, David was not supposed to be home at that time. Right. David was supposed to be out with his Amen. men fighting a war. Amen. David was not where he was supposed to be right. at. He told his servants to go and get right. Bathsheba. Yeah. During that time when the king tells someone to go yeah. do something, it ain't <laughs> optional. Right. It's going to happen. Right. Right. David knew what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. He turned around and he, he sent them to go get Bathsheba and she came. And, and then he turned around after he had committed adultery and rape and all that had happened. He turned around and had her husband Uriah killed. Yeah. So now we've got adultery, rape, we've got murder. He said, I'm the man who took a census of the war able bodies in Israel and Judah. My pride was so great that I relied on the number of men rather than what God wanted me to do. Right. I was involved in polygamy. My daughter named Tamar was raped by her half-brother Amnon. Yep. And I was angry but not but done nothing about it. Right. I was a wicked, horrible, an adulterer, a murderer, a worthless yeah. person. I wrote a lot of Psalms. Psalms 51 is one of my biggest where I repented yeah. for what I had done right. and I turned all my I turned from all my wickedness. Right. I'm in the lineage of Christ. Right. I reigned over Israel 40 years. I died a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. Solomon took over my place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he looked at me and he said, my name is David. God's not done with you. Yeah. 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 This man, David, had finished talking and he had got up. And there again, I still didn't recognize him. I'd never seen David before in my life. He got up and, and he walked out the left-hand side door right here. And before I could say anything and ask him any more questions, again, I sat there in the room by myself. And it felt like eternity had went by and the door opened again on the right-hand side. And another man stepped and he came over and sat down in front of me. I sat there in silence. He said like the others had done before, do you know who I am? I once again replied, no, I don't, just like I had all the others. And the man looked at me and he said, I was just a fisherman along with my brother Andrew. I walked, I talked, I ate, I slept, I worshiped, and I prayed with Jesus. I asked Jesus if that was really him walking on the water, bid me to come, and he yep. did so. Yep. And as soon as I took my eyes off Jesus, I began yep. to sink. Uh. I was untrained in the Mosaic law, yet Jesus picked me as one of the twelve. I messed up a lot, but Jesus never gave up on me. Yeah. I cut off a man's ear when they tried to take Jesus yeah. away, and he told me to stop. I denied him three times in yeah. front of people like he said I would, and Jesus still used me for his glory. Right. Amen. Right. My name is Peter, yep. Amen. and God's not done with you. Right. Right. And as Peter got up to walk away, I sat in shock and awe because I knew it was coming back to me. Yeah. I knew these people. I had read about them. I had studied about them. But I still wasn't sure of what exactly was going on or where I was at. <laughs> A couple minutes later, the door opens again. And once again, I didn't know who this man was. And he sat down in front of him and he got ready to speak. And I just stopped him and I told him, I said, I don't know who you are before you even ask me. <laughs> and this man, he looked up and he smiled and he said, that's all right. He said, at one time I persecuted and killed Jews. I hated them until one day on the way to Damascus I heard a voice ask me, 
why do I persecute him? Jesus was talking to me and I gave my life over to him. As the man began to tell me his story, I stopped him with amazement in my eyes and in my voice. And I said, you're Paul. He grinned and said, yes, I am. I looked at him and said, because of your obedience to the Lord, you are the chosen vessel unto Jesus Christ to bear his name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. You wrote a lot of the New Testament inspired by the Holy Ghost. You were in prison multiple times during your ministry. You wrote letters, which is books of the Bibles, while in prison. You were beat different times throughout yep. your ministry. You even yep. died in prison. Yep. Paul looked and said, yes, you're correct. All that did happen and more. And I said, how? How did you keep going with everything that was happening to you? And he reached over and he hugged me and he said, God's not done with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. After I let go of hugging him, I felt like I was about to cry. I didn't understand what was going on or where I was at or why I was there. And as Paul left the room, I sat there in silence, thinking, wondering, trying to rationalize what was going on in my head. I had read all these stories, all these accounts of Scripture. I knew everything that was going on, but I didn't understand where I was at. I didn't understand what I was doing there. Was I being interrogated? Was I, was I, was I dead? Was I going to die? I was just questioning what was happening in my life right now. Why am I here? What is the reason? And as I sat there, the door on the right hand side had opened up. And a bright light shone through. And out stepped a man. And I was instantly filled with joy and fear as the great I am stepped into the room where I was at. Jesus looked at me and he said, Do you know who I am? And I said, I've never seen you. But you are the light of the world. Yeah. Amen. You're my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're the one who was beat for me yeah. and the rest of the world. Right. You're the one who left the 99 to find the one. Yeah. You're the Alpha, the Omega, yeah. the one who was crucified and rose again three days later. Right. You're the one who performs the miracles. Right. You're the one who saves physically and spiritually. Right. You're the rock, the chief cornerstone on which I stand. Right. And I looked at him and I said, why am I here? And Jesus got up out of his chair and he hugged me. And as I began to weep, he said, my child, I love you. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to tell you, I'm not done with you. Yeah. He said, I know all your faults and failures. I knew every sin you were going to commit before your salvation and after your salvation. I know everything about you and your life. And I'm not done with you. <laughs> and as I sat there, I was hugging him and I was weeping and I was crying. And I questioned and wondered, why is God showing me all this? What have I done? What is he trying to tell me? And Jesus looked at me. And he said, I had my Apostle Paul write in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very uh -huh. thing, Amen. that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until Amen. the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to tell you this morning, yeah. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know your circumstance. I don't know the trials and troubles and your tribulations. I don't know where God got you at right now, but I want to tell you, God's not done with you. Right. We have right. work to do here right. on this earth while we're still here. Right. And we've got to yeah. do it. Right. 
we got to put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. Right. And we got to be obedient and say, Lord, here I am. Right. Send me. I'll go. Lord, what do you want me to do? And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that is hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to be in the will of God. I know it's hard to find the will of God. I've been there. I have been there. I've been through that. It's not easy. It ain't easy to follow exactly what God wants you to do. But you want to know something? You want to know why it's not easy? Because if it was easy, the whole entire world would do it. If it was easy, there wouldn't be no point for the last book of Revelation. There wouldn't be no point for the rapture, no tribulation, no nothing. Because everything would be perfect. Jesus Christ. He came here. And lived on this earth. Flesh. He walked and talked just like we do. He slept. He ate. He prayed. He was beat, he was crucified, he died, and he rose again three yeah. days later. Yeah. Yeah. And so each and every one of us can have a home in heaven. Right. Yeah. Amen. Right. It's for each and every single one of us. Right. God is not done with you. Right. I know that times seem real dark. Yeah. I know right now everything that's going on in this world. And I know the school systems and all the 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 ungodliness that's happening up in yeah. the White House and the ungodliness yeah. that happens here in Rutherford County yeah. alone. Amen. The ungodliness that probably happens in some of your households. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. But God's not done with you. Yeah. You've got to give it to Him, though. Yeah. If you want God to move in your life, yeah. you want me to tell you how God's going to move in your life? This ain't even part of my message. I actually am out. I don't have nothing else to say, but God told me to say something. You want to know how God's going to move in your life and show you? You've got to be obedient. Right. And you want to know how to be obedient? Number one, you need to come to church. Yeah. Yeah. Not just Sunday mornings, but we got Sunday school, we got Sunday night, we got Wednesday night. But you got to pray too. Amen. You got to read your Bible. Yeah. You don't know something. Did y'all hear what happened two weeks ago? There was a man out in Russia, and I can't think of his name because I can't pronounce half them names anyway, but there was a man out in Russia, and there was an American person out there, and they turned around and they crucified him. Did y'all not hear about that? That's because it was a lie. If you ain't reading your Bibles, how do you know that what me and Brother Brian is telling you is right? Yeah. If you ever, don't ever pick up the Word of God for yourself and actually study and look at it, how do you know it's right? Right. 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 It ain't my place. It ain't Brother Brian's place. It is your place. You're responsible. And I wasn't even going to, that's a whole totally different message, but you yourself are responsible. Amen. If you're a parent in here right now and you got children and you're dependent on Brian to teach your child, Lord help them because they ain't getting enough. They ain't going to get it but two or three times a week because that's all you show up here. Some of you don't show up once. And I love you. I'm not being down on you. Don't take it that way. God loves you too and he's not done with you. But I'm trying to tell you that if you want this church to grow, if you want the back doors to blow off, if you want to fill up the pews, you got to be obedient and get in the church. And I understand that you got to work. you got a job. I'm not saying that. And I understand you take vacation. I'm not saying that. But you ain't got no reason why you can't get in here nine times out of ten and be in God's house. Now praise God, let's all stand. <laughs> As we get ready to open up the altar here, we're going to have this invitation. I want to tell you something this morning. 
Jesus Christ loves you. And He loves each and every single one of you. No matter how hard of a time you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter what the difficulty is right now, He loves you and He cares about you. And He's not done with you. But if you want Him to use you, you got to be a willing vessel. You got to be willing to be that clay and get on that pot so you can be uh, get on that wheel so you can be molded into what God wants you to be. If you got someone in your heart you need to make right, you come on down here. I'm done. Page 375. <laughs>